Hi, this is Russ Anderson. I'm going to talk about 360 VR export to After Effects, which includes integrated export to Cinema 4D for 3D insertions. This Insta360 Pro 4K shot is already tracked, solved, and stabilized. There are a lot of details to that which are addressed in other tutorials, and I won't be covering here though. But I will give a quick recap. You'll notice that at the bottom of the shot, You'll see there's a simply animated roto mask for the cameraman. There's also a roto mask up at the top for the sky. And the shot was auto tracked using those two little masks. Then there was the standard sort of cleanup of trackers in the sky area here that wasn't masked out and some off of the shadow of the camera on the ground. So that was a, a pretty routine thing. One quick note that you don't need to do the cleanup on a full resolution shot. You can just bring up the image preprocessor and drop the resolution down once you have already completed the auto tracking process. You don't need the high resolution just to delete trackers. So once the trackers were culled appropriately, then I did the solve and, you know, cold the trackers, clean them up further. Now, to set up a coordinate system, I did create a number of supervised trackers. You see them here, these peachy ones, and picked out which ones were used so that the initial view of the camera was facing straight ahead in the direction that I wanted. So I actually chose these two to more or less line up with the direction of, that I wanted, actually perpendicular to it. So that was just a little thought about what it was that I was trying to accomplish that guided what trackers I, you know, what trackers I generated and how I did the setup. And it's just a standard star three type of coordinate system set up using those trackers and one of those on the ground back there. A few other details after the tracking was all set up. You notice also I did the uh, stabilize from camera path. And once that was now down, also we have the light set up up there using a tracker. And it's a zero weighted tracker, far tracker, and it's a far light. So you only need one tracker to figure out where the light should go, and Synthize does that, that setup, using the light panel. We've got the three inserted tents. Those were just imported objects. They have texture maps on them. They're set up to be lit textures. And one somewhat more subtle point is that there's actually a plane here that's a shadow catcher using the shadow map maker script, which is covered elsewhere. But it lets us generate an actual textured plane that says where the shadow should go. It would be an option probably to do that shadow generation in Cinema 4D instead. Here, it was just easier for me to do it inside of Synthize. And that way it goes to all sorts of downstream packages already set up. So that's our quick walkthrough. Now let's go and take a look at the export process itself. So we're exporting to After Effects JavaScript. And it's actually producing quite a number of different files, you'll see. I'll just reset the, the settings back to the defaults. You can see the things that I change are that I don't want to output the trackers. I give the something like 600 different layers inside of After Effects. I don't need them don't need them in Cinema 4D either. 
If you wanted to get just a couple of them, you can use the export checkbox on the 3D panel to control what you want. We do want to turn on the Cinema 4D integration, so it's going to write out a film box file. If we were just doing a project where we needed to add 2D sorts of objects inside of After Effects, say some animated television screen inserts, or you know some logos in different places, something like that, some, some stock footage that's all going to happen inside After Effects, then you wouldn't need to do the Cinema 4D integration here at all. Just leave that off. But here, since we're doing the 3D mesh that are they're coming and going through Cinema 4D, we have it turned on, and we'll tell Cinema 4D to use the OpenGL renderer, which will turn off some extra grid lines, as it turns out. So with that done, we are ready to do our export. And I already have After Effects open. And you can see it's gone and read in the JavaScript file that we just exported and has done an initial render of that. So here's the overall project. You'll see there's quite a few things in there. We'll take a look at some of them later. One thing I want to call your attention to is that there are a couple of shadows on the ground that are wrong. And that's because that shadow map maker takes things that are planes and it makes them into really things that aren't. So that can confuse some of the exporters which are expecting planes to stay simple. So this camo one underscore 3D, this comp has the entire 3D environment. So if you're going to add you know, additional, you know, animated layers, your logos, your whatever it is, stock imagery, it would go into the 3D environment here. In this case, we're going to take that plane that we don't want, and we're going to just delete it. So now when we go back to our shot, you'll see that this is the 360 VR view. Now that's, that's gone and disappeared in due time. Now, so far we've just exported the film box file from Synthize as part of the After Effects export. So now we need to go and, and work with Cinema 4D a little to get that set up. So we're using the Cinema 4D light that comes with After Effects. If you need to start that up, which I did previously, just do this file new and max on Cinema 4D. That's the only way to start the Cinema 4D light that comes with After Effects. What we need to do is open up the film box file that was just exported by Synthize. And here we have it inside of Cinema 4D. The film box export in C4D doesn't get the alpha channel information set up right. So we need to fix that up. And to do that, we're going to go and turn on the alpha channel for it, and we need to select it to be this texture for the plane that Synthize wrote out as part of that export also. So with that alpha channel applied, you know now you see you have just the shadow in the right spots. There's another detail in Cinema 4D that it likes to soften our alpha channels which causes some undesirable fringing. So we need to turn off soft and turn on invert. And now we'll get our shadows just, just where we want them. And now we can save the file away. And it's just going to be a C4D file. And if we switch back to After Effects, you'll see that after a little while it notices that that Cinema 4D file has changed and it goes and reloads it and re-renders the file. So there are our tents with their shadows underneath them. So that's pretty good. At this point we could go and work on the scene, do more interesting things to it inside of Cinema 4D, maybe have our animated whatevers, work on our different shader models, 
whatever you like. You can also do things inside the After Effects environment. I showed you that, the, the 3D environment comp there, which isn't showing anything too terribly interesting unless we hunt it down. But what's going on is that that 3D environment comp is referenced by six other different comps that are the six different sides of a cube. So here's the, the front view, and you'll see here are three tenths inside of that, just against black. And the Cinema 4D layer has this Cineware effect on it. And that Cineware effect is what is used to combine After Effects and Cinema 4D to, to do 3D rendering inside or kind of with After Effects. So to learn more about that process, you can check out the Cineware manuals that come with After Effects. And there's, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do there to, to bring out like different layers for the shadow, different layers for the tents maybe different layers for each tent. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of, of things you can do with this Cineware package with uh, a little bit of study. But that's, that's sort of outside of the scope of Synthize. I'm just showing you where things are. You'll notice there are, in fact, six of those different effects, one for each of those different views. Those six different views are combined in this. A cubic view, and that cubic view is then converted by a plugin that comes with Synthize that converts that cubic view back into a normal equirectangular image. Here's our, our Synthize Cube Mapper plugin, and that lets you composite back into your original equirectangular footage. So that's kind of what this setup looks like. You know, right now there's the effect that comes with Synthize. You know, in the future there'll probably be one that comes with uh, After Effects as well. It's not, probably not going to matter which one ultimately gets used, but right now it's set up so that everything uses the one that comes with Synthize. You just need to make sure that you actually install it into After Effects. Once you've got your project all set up, including in Cinema 4D and After Effects, you know, then you want to save your project uh, from After Effects, and then you can send it over to Adobe as media and you know encoder. Couple observations. You want to increase the bit rate. Usually you're gonna sending it out as H264. You need to have a much higher bit rate than you might for some. HD resolution project. And there is a checkbox these days that says video is VR, so that you don't have to use Google's little script to uh, turn on the equirectangular flag for your uh, MP4s. It can get done automatically by the media encoder. Now, the Insta360 Pro does feature 8K output if you want it. And it is possible to, to run that through this whole process. Also, you can take the, you know, the synthize scene here and just do a shot change shot images to the 8K version of the shot. Basically just rerun the export process and the Cinema 4D sort of process throughout this and then be able to create the 8K version of the shot. Or you could do that in the first place if that's what you want. Um, and, and produce the 8K result. And, you know, if, if you're going to do that, you'll almost certainly need to be using H.265 in the media exporter, this uh, HEVC encoder, to be able to support the uh, 8K output. But if you work through all this, you can get some, you know, very high resolution and very nifty results. So hopefully that gives you an idea of sort of some of the different things you can do R and gives you an idea of what you can look for in the various documentation. So thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.